Good morning, everyone. This is Michael with US Flight Co. And today we're going to be removing a vacuum system out of one of our 172s. Um, we're going to be upgrading the 172 to some more modern avionics. And I thought that uh, we would kind of just cover a little bit about what we're doing here and um, yeah, go from there. So we look forward to kind of showing you how the vacuum system works, how the vacuum pump works, all the uh, items in the system. And uh, we're putting two GI 275s, those are Garmin products uh, that we're installing into the Cessna, which do not require a vacuum system anymore. The vacuum pump that creates the suction for the instruments is located on the the aft side of the engine this area here is called the accessory case back in here there's a lot of things on the back of the accessory case but this unit right here is the vacuum pump this is uh, the inlet for the vacuum pump pardon me that is the outlet for the vacuum pump this is the inlet sorry I had to got take a look there so the outlet is right here the inlet is right here. So when the vacuum uh, pump rotates, it's driven off of a gear off the back of the engine. It creates suction through this tube. This tube goes around, goes to the firewall. So the vacuum pump comes in. We're, we've got the avionics, or excuse me, the radios out, so it's a good time to kind of look behind the panel. But um, we're gonna be installing some new avionics here and some equipment over here but the, that tube comes back and uh, routes uh, the plumbing for the tubing goes to your two pneumatic instruments which are the attitude indicator and the DG the directional gyro um, it also has a T in the in the plumbing to give you uh, a reading of suction or vacuum so the vacuum system obviously goes to there as well and then if we kind of peek back here you can see that cartridge filter that is where the vacuum starts so when the vacuum pump is sucking air in that little white canister there is where the air comes into that filter and then goes through the instruments um, and then uh, it also goes through a regulator which I can't see right now but there's a regulator back there and then it uh, eventually makes its way to the vacuum pump where the vacuum is actually being created so Okay guys, we're back with uh, removing the vacuum system on the 172 and we got the vacuum pump off. It lived right here. Just kind of want to give you guys a quick little shot of what the gear driving the vacuum pump looks like. Um, and then I just wanted to talk about what happens when the vacuum pump fails. One of the most common reasons why the vacuum pump fails is because this gear right here shears it breaks actually right inside here it breaks this is a non-metallic gear and usually it breaks because something inside the vacuum pump there are some carbon veins that rotate and they wear over time if it gets wet in there with oil or uh, fod foreign uh, object debris gets in there it'll jam up the pump it'll uh, the gear on the engine will uh, snap because that's a metal a metal gear there will snap this non-metallic gear and it's designed to do that so that it doesn't damage the engine it only damages the vacuum pump so good uh, engineering little thing otherwise if this was metal it could damage the driving gear in the engine which is going to cost a lot more in repairs and could uh, potentially damage the engine further so uh, that's kind of what happens when a vacuum pump goes out, and uh, thanks for watching.